Hey there, everybody, and welcome to tonight's show. It's the Day Tripper Photo Show, episode number 43. Uh, yeah, we've been doing this for a little while. Um, see somebody missing down here in the bottom. Uh, it's just myself and Darren tonight. Gabriel is camping, and you know what? He said he's going to try and come on the show, but if he does, I am really seriously going to doubt his loyalty to if his wife. If he does make it on the show, then he has to appear on Blake's show as the world-class number one geek nerd. <laughs> who, would go on a, who would go on a camping trip with their family and then say, oh, i got to do a webinar, and then try and join it from their phone out at a cottage or a campsite. I know, it's true. It's, uh, but he has been trying. He's been texting me, and he's been like, I'm trying to get on, but I don't have enough bandwidth. Okay, yeah. it's okay. Just relax. Blake, Blake, sign him up. Sign him up, Blake. you got to get him <laughs> on your show. <laughs> um, well, I'm Brian, and of course with me tonight is Darren. Darren, how have you been this week, man? I've been doing good. Keeping keeping under the radar, keeping cool, was uh, out in Aurelia, Gravenhurst, uh, where else was I, Orangeville, all, all over central Ontario. Wow. What are you doing? Photographing, house, photographing oh. houses. Well, that's good, good. You're keeping busy. They were air conditioned. I was about to ask. <laughs> I was just about to ask. So um, I'd leave... I'd, I'd leave the basement till last. So I go out and do the yard, and then I come in and do the basement because that's the coldest place in the house. Get a little chill on. No, you have to. It's been brutal here. For those of you who aren't in this sweltering heat, which I don't know who isn't right now, um, but uh, it, it's ridiculous. I just was outside earlier. Uh, the th thermostat was reading, or the thermometer was reading like 36 or 37 without the Humidex involved. It's absolutely brutal right now. So. Yes, yesterday I was uh, walking around Toronto with my little brother. We went all over the place walking around, and of course I've got a little bit of the <laughs> the sunburn right now. But it's okay; it was worth it. It's, I don't get hanging out with my brother enough, and uh, he loves photography too. So we have that common interest, and it was great, great. Anyway, uh, that's Rick, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was on our show once or twice. He kind of hung out with us on the show, on our first show, I think it was. But, uh, yeah, Rick's a good, good kid. Really like that guy. It helps that he's my brother. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> tonight's episode is on choosing the right camera bag. And it's not as easy as it sounds, is it, Darren? No, it's not. Because just when you think you have the right camera bag, you'll see another one come along that has another feature you wanted. And darn, I thought I, I had know. the right one. I know. It's so true. Um, the hardest thing for me on the sales floor, by far, is trying to help somebody choose a camera bag. I mean... Most people, when they walk in the store, they're like, I want to buy a Nikon, or I want to buy a Canon. All right, fine. So you, you show them five Nikon cameras. I never really get to five, maybe two or three. There's 300 camera bags on the wall. I mean, there's a whole wall of camera bags of all different prices, all different sizes, uh, different needs, different purposes. So how does one person choose that one perfect bag? Well, we were posed this question on the Day Tripper Photo community. Um, our good friend, Blake, uh, posted a, a follow-up question from somebody he knew, hoping to get some good advice. So we'll read that question later on our email. Um, but, you know, choosing that right bag, I don't think it's possible. How many do you well, have, Darren? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. I've, I've lost count. Oh, that's uh, ridiculous. Some, some I should probably sell, although I must say uh, the Low Pro camera bag, I had a really old one, and the foam inside started to deteriorate and come apart and I took it to where is it uh, who, who carries low pro is that Damon yeah I, I took it into to their office they, they said bring it in we'll have a look at it they gave me a whole brand new bag they're awesome you that that blew me away I went like this thing's like I've, I've got my lifespan out of it I was just looking for a couple of parts for this they gave me a whole new bag and I didn't even tell them it worked at Henry's that's what they do, and that's the, the the great part. The thing I love about selling certain bags over others is that if there is a problem, you bring it into the store. We say, oh, no problem. You know your camera has a lifetime warranty. Here's a new one. You oh, do it yeah, in the store. The, the, um, the, the strap was slipping out. It wouldn't stay secured. It kept getting longer and longer and longer. That's a weird one. Yeah, and uh, they just gave me a whole new bag. All I was looking for for that one was the strap. Hmm. Well, you know... These things happen. They happen. And, of course, the one thing that's never warranted, though, is the zipper. Why is that? If the uh, zipper breaks? People can abuse it if you pick it up by the handle when it's zippered. If you don't put on those top clasps, they've got a lot of weight in there, that'll pull the zipper apart. Mm. 
because zippers aren't designed to to pull that kind of weight. So, yeah, that's true. I could uh, I could understand that. Bottom line is, most of the time they'll just replace it or fix it anyway. I mean, they have to make the technical. It's not supposed to be, but they'll still fix it a lot of the time. Anyway, all kinds of different bags. We've got a lot of stuff to get into. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly re uh, remind everybody about our creative corner that we're doing right now. It's a three-week creative corner. I've actually come up with my theme earlier today. I was just inspired. Uh, actually, I was cleaning up my camera bag closet. <laughs> my, yes, my camera bag closet, and I found something in there that made me want to do um, a video and, and, and turn it into something. So it's going to happen. Hopefully, I'll have it done by the end of this uh, this video challenge that we're doing. So the challenge is you have to um, basically think of a theme, have some thought involved in it, plan it out, make it just a real looking video. It could be a movie, it could be a commercial, it could be anything you want it to be, but it has to have a point and you have to have actually edited it and put it together and made it look presentable, not just iPhone, record something on Instagram and make a seven-second clip and say, here you go. Um, so keep working on it. Next week, we're going to do that final little bit to help you guys out with this video challenge. We're going to be having a, our show next week is going to be on uh, video post-production. So basically putting some video together uh, in a very basic, quick way and showing how to add music and to like what do wipes and fades and so on and so forth. So we're going to go into a few of the different softwares, and that's all next week. But um, next week is the final week for this video challenge. After that, you can post them. We're going to give a certain amount of time, and then we're going to be giving away prizes. Yes, actual prizes, Darren. Woo! We're giving away some really cool stuff, actually. Um, a couple of people are going to get some cotton carrier little straps for your sides. Um, even the cotton carrier hand strap, lots of cotton carrier stuff. Yeah, I actually really like this stuff. I don't know. Uh, Darren uses a spider. We were just talking before we went on air um, how he uses a spider strap. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna have to try really hard to get me to change away from the spider." But you know, I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try. You like it? It works for you, right? Hey, I'll try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and that's just it. You've got to try something. Now, the problem with going out and buying all this stuff is it's not cheap. There's so many different camera bags that come out at so, so like ridiculous high prices. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, these are about $80 when you buy them in the kits. So, And then the full chest strap system and everything, you're looking about 180 bucks. Really, if you're buying cotton carrier stuff, you're better off buying the entire package uh, except if you buy the hand strap, that's only 20 bucks, and that's a really good buy. But eh, we'll get to that in a few seconds. But uh, yeah, the Creative Corner, make sure you send in your videos, post them to the Daytripper Photo community, and uh, you know share a link from a YouTube that you upload to YouTube or something like that, and share it with us. Oh, and by the way, if you like the show, last week's show, by the way, was just blow, blowing up. So many people are watching that show. It's awesome that Peter was on with us, and he, you know his following, seemed to be watch, following seems to be watching our show, which is great. Um, but it was a fun show, and you, you have to send in your videos, you have to post, you have to share, you have to be involved in the community, and everybody will benefit from it. Um, email. Why don't we talk about that email? The whole thing that made us think about doing this thing in the first place. Sure. Why don't you read that one, Darren? Uh, I'd have to bring that back up on the screen. <laughs> Put you on the spot again. And and then I might have to put on the, the, the glasses. The glasses. On. I'll save you. I'll save you. Or you want to get it? Okay, here it is. Go for it. Serena Star Leonard said, "Hey, photography peeps, are we peepers?" <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. If I was to go to the police station and say, "Hey, why don't I do some peeping around here?" <laughs> uh, times have changed, Darren. It's not as bad as you think. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess it, I guess it depends where you're doing your peeping, right? Like anything else. <laughs> Just as long as you're not peeing, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I need your help, please. Yeah, I'll I'm say. looking for some <laughs> kick-ass, super durable, dedicated camera bag, no laptop sleeve to hold two DSLRs, four lenses, a video mic, GoPro, viewfinder, etc., etc., etc. Also, I prefer it didn't look too obviously like a camera bag. It has to fit under the seats on a bus, overhead compartments, uh, to be comfy to carry, no wheels, with lots of nice padding to protect our gear. Any suggestions, recommendations would be very much appreciated. Oh, 
and under $100 and available in UK or Ireland in the next two weeks would be ideal. Wow. What are the chances of that? Now, okay, it does now, sound like the perfect camera bag, though, doesn't it? Now, the $100, if, if they're from Europe, is that 100 euros? If it's 100 euros, then that's a little bit more doable. I think 100 euros may be what it is, because if it's 100 Canadian dollars, it sort of it doesn't make sense, because, you know, why would you be putting economy ahead of, you know, quality you know, and protection? And this is it. I mean, really what she's <laughs> describing right there is something along this line, right? This yeah. is the, the Think Tank Retrospective 30. It's a big enough bag to carry two bodies. In fact, sorry for the Velcro noise. I can actually put a body in this front pouch right here. I've done it. My D700 fits in the pouch. Um, inside, you've got tons and tons of space for anything you want to put in there, microphones, you name it. And uh, this is definitely going to be the bag that would hold what you want to carry. The problem is it sells for, I don't know, like... 200 and some odd dollars. So if we're talking euros, then that might make a little more sense. But if we're talking Canadian dollars, as you're saying, Darren, not exactly what you're going to get. And you're dealing with a steady bottom. You're dealing with a lifetime guarantee. You're dealing with good quality materials, that nice gray interior for white balance. I mean, it's a thought-out bag. It's, it's waterproof or water-resistant, isn't it? It actually, they come with the... And they have a rain sleeve. Comes rain with the, sleeve yeah. thingies. Now, this is another thing. When you start getting into camera bags, it's not just the bag anymore. It's all the peripherals that come with them. One thing I like about Think Tank is they do give you a removable bag. In the low pros, they're all attached, so you always have this lump in your camera bag, which yeah. not that big a deal, right? Well, but then you can't forget it at home when you really need it, right? Now, most of the shooting that I do, I pretty much know what the weather's going to be like a week in advance. I'm always watching the weather reports and I'm doing day trips. So I'm, I'm pretty tuned in to if the weather's going to work or not. Uh, oh, we just had our first rain out. I was pretty di disappointed. It was our, Joker, or our Tom Taylor Trail day trip. First rain out in five years. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So it, it did rain out? Uh, rain out. Yeah, we didn't oh. go. But we've rescheduled, and we're going to be doing it July 28th. So it's still happening, providing the weather isn't like it was today. That's your first rain out in how many years? Five years. Crazy, eh? It, it it is you must. I know Gabriel doesn't believe in him, but you know maybe you should go and make another donation to be good for another five years. Yeah, I know. Hey, you know what? I'm a firm believer that if you're a good person and uh, you treat people right and karma's on your side, then you know Mother Nature likes you too. In fact, when I was a kid, I was babysat by Mother Nature. It's a true story, but we'll get to that another day. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, someone someone tied you to a tree too, huh? <laughs> no. The local babysitter for our court in Montreal, everybody called her Mother Nature. So, okay. Mrs. Foss Daddy was her real name. Excellent lady. Anyway, um, peripherals, all these little things, little camera bag, um, covers, rain sleeves, all this stuff always ends up lying all over the place. All these little How many of these things do you have lying around? I've got a lot, and not all of them are gray. No, I bet. There's black so, so, and yellow. No, no. Some of them are green. They look gray, but they're green. So if I go to use it. For a white balance, it doesn't work. See, that's the thing. I always use these things for white balance. They work. Re they work well. I swear to God, I took one out and it. It was a, it had a it, compared to the other one. Anyways, it looked green. Huh. Interesting. Well, these are all pretty from, much the same shape. That was from an older. That was from an older camera bag before anybody thought to need to use these things to do a um, a white balance for color, as opposed to a gray balance for eighteen percent gray. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that in a little bit because we haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of the discussion yet. Um, to answer the question quickly, I think for Serena Star Leonard, um, the hardest thing for us to do is to say, this is the perfect bag for you. You have to try it on. You have to put it on your shoulder. You have to walk around with it for a little while. I mean, yesterday, walking around downtown Toronto, if I didn't have this thing on my hip and I had to carry a camera bag the whole time, I mean, I had this on me because I was going from Newmarket down to Toronto and I had to carry my wallet and I had to carry all this other stuff and this was really uncomfortable on my shoulder. Keeping my camera right here made it easy, quick. I didn't even feel it on my hip the whole day walking. Um, very comfortable. It's well, that, so that, that would reduce the price of the camera bag if you didn't have to hold the uh, one camera and lens in there. 
right? There's always be one camera and lens out, but then you'd have to invest in the carrier system. Exactly, and that's something else we're going to talk about. I mean, there's not just bags, is there? There's carrier systems, which is actually why we're calling this show, uh, you know, choosing your camera bag, sure, but actually it's choosing your entire camera support system. Um, we're going to get more into that stuff. It's hard to say what to use. I mean, she's asking to carry two DSLRs, four lenses, video mic, GoPro. Yeah, but we'd viewfinder. have to know what kind. We'd have to know what kind of lenses they are. You know, are they 70 to 200, 28, and is it a, you know, 100 to 400? You know, if they're really big lenses, you're going to need a really big bag. If they're a couple of prime lenses, prime lenses are smaller. You can stack two or three of them on top of each other. True. Good point. And if you yeah. are stacking them on top of each other, make sure you use a little separators in between them. Give them yeah. a little support. And then the question to ask, too, is, is it just for transportation, from point A to point B, and when you get to wherever it is you're going, you take the stuff out and just use what you need, or do you need to be able to, you know, hike with it? Yeah. Well, actually, that just kind of brings us right into the actual meat and potatoes of the conversation. Um, we've all had different camera bags. I counted nine of them today when I was going through my stuff down in the crawl space and up here, and that's not including individual pieces like lens pouch and this. This is one piece here, right? Um, there's so many different things around there, and I am a big of a, a bit of a bagaholic. I don't know. There, I think there's a bit of an addiction to cheap, to buying bags and pack kits and like little. I love these little flash holder things. You can put all your fun stuff, like my flashlights and stuff like that, for day trips, right? So it's not just your camera bag. It's what else do you need for the entire experience? Um, I've broken it down to four main groups. Now there could be many, many more. This is just how I've broken it down. First would be a home base. Home base is that big old camera bag that you would get to carry everything. Um, if I'm going to a day trip, Darren and I are going to Algonquin Park. We have all our people with us. I want to carry everything. So I'll put everything in my home base, my bag, uh, my camera, sorry, my both cameras. I'll take my lens or my memory card holders, my battery grip, accessories, my battery grip, take all my little clamps, you name it. Um, who knows what else is in this thing? I think I found my mother-in-law in here one day. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a big bag. I use the Low Pro uh, Pro Runner X450 as my main camera bag. It's big enough. Uh, here. This is it. Yeah. Ooh, uh. Here's my big bag there. I don't want to open it up because everything will be flying out, but I'll see if I can show you. You can see it's, it's a fairly decent size. You can carry everything in here. Right? That's got wheels. It's got wheels, right? Absolutely. Good point. But it, but, it doesn't have, but it doesn't have a backpack. This actually has both. Does it have both? This has. And this is the cool thing. When you get a home base and you're carrying everything with you, you want to make sure you can actually walk around with it. So as you see, it's got the wheels on there, well used by the marks here. I've actually walked to work and back with this bag, rolling it the whole time. It I was going to say, well. we, wheels are a definite asset. I don't know why somebody would say if they're traveling, why they would not want wheels. That's right. It's got a little handle that comes up the top, and then you can just wheel it, up, wheel it along. Now, you can almost tell where the straps are. You pull this down. Sorry for the noise, guys. And there's the shoulder straps. So these come out and clip down in here, and it's a backpack. So... It's got handles, you can carry it here and here. It's got a tripod boot that you can mount to the front right here, and the tripod goes up the top. So for a home base, to me, this is the perfect bag. It carries everything I need. Awesome. However, as you can see, I'm out of breath just picking it up and showing everybody. Um, that's not what you would want to use if you just want to go to Toronto for the day with your brother on a 100-degree, hot, humid nasty Toronto day taking the subway or the train or any of those things or even in a car. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to carry. What would you take if you were going on a trip down east for a week? Down east for a week, I'd probably bring the home base. You'd bring everything? Well, most everything. Either that or I'd bring this, the Retrospective 30, because it's big enough to carry all kinds of stuff, chargers that's and so on. I'm going away on vacation for a week, and I'm just trying to decide what it is I want to bring, and think: Do I really need to bring, you know, a, a camera bag per se? I would think you so. Know, 
I can I can put a put a lens, you know, in a pair of socks and throw it in a suitcase. Well, you, you know? see, this is actually part of the conversation. When we're thinking about something under a hundred dollars, what's wrong with a duffel bag? Take your lens, wrap it in some tube socks. Um, you know, take your well, camera, wrap it in a shirt. You want it to be carry on. I think one of the things she said was carry on, and for me, I'll be flying, so I want to make sure that I can carry it on. Make sure that it's going to you know fit under the seat. But if I kick it with my foot, I want it to have enough padding that you know if we get bounced or knocked or hit you know god forbid we have a landing like they did in san francisco where the pilot just basically forgets to have enough speed to make it to the runway okay yet another reason not to fly <laughs> <laughs> i think no seriously though darren you should have a camera bag and then i, if do, you have, to... I do have a camera bag I just... well i know i know but you should bring a camera bag for your trip I mean, thinking, you can have your reading one, materials. I'm thinking, I need, I'm thinking I need a new one like that. <laughs> you could use this one. You're welcome there to. You there you go. Problem solved. You can use my retrospective Problem. 30. Does that take a 15-inch laptop computer? No. You slide one in? No, but you can put an iPad in the back. Actually, you know what? I'm on holidays. What do I need a computer for? Well, unless you're Gabriel and, you know, you want to actually be a part of a hangout or something. <laughs> uh, I mean, we talked about a one-week vacation I go to the cottage for a week with Shelly, and I bring the home base. But I also bring something like that. So I'm just going to be doing day trips, and I'll just bring this. I have a couple lens pouches. These lens pouches are excellent. These are the Think Tank lens drop-in, large lens drop-ins. And it holds, I put a Sigma 150 to 500 in here, and the back end is just sticking out. But because of the way it cinches in, it actually holds on to the, the foot, the tripod foot of the lens. So even though the top end is sticking out, it, it, you can put it upside down and things aren't going to fall out. You can cinch it in tight enough that if you're using one of these as a, a change purse, you don't have to worry about change falling out of there because it's, it's closed up pretty tight. And you can fit a couple of these on this little speed belt. And I have my little Merce that I carry around with me sometimes where I could fit. I mean, I fit my D700 inside this thing one time. Worked What's, out well. What do one of those belts cost? Um, at, at the camera store, are they like more than twenty dollars? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're like forty bucks or so. If someone's on a budget, now you're not going to get all the same features and accessories to be able to hold things. And I've looked at those, and they do have little holders and Velcro things to stop those pouches from sliding around, which would definitely be worth uh, an extra investment. But if you were on a budget, Canadian Tire, if you go to the um, tool department they sell uh, they sell um, straps for you know carpentry aprons and tool mm -hmm. pouches and all that for, for less than twenty dollars yeah you know those are fantastic just a nice thick leather belt works really well I mean all day yesterday my normal day-to-day -day leather belt was all I really needed to support this thing yeah when it comes to the camera gear though you like something that you know snaps on securely but is quick to get off mm-hmm that's where those quick release uh, belts are really nice. Also, if you are going to be carrying a lot of weight, one of the things that uh, I've learned is it can get really heavy on the hips if you start loading your hips up with some weight. Oh, yeah. So I got my mom to get me some suspenders for Christmas, carpentry suspenders. And uh, I've got them with me now. So the next time I go hiking around, I'll put the suspenders on the belt pack so that some of the weight's on the waist and some of the weight's on the shoulders. It's so true. I mean, I was actually, one reason why I'm trying to get away from using this think tank system is because when I'm done at the end of a long day, I am walking crooked for about a week. Especially, and this is another type of bag. This is the think tank holster bag. I actually got this because I was using the Sigma 150 to 500 quite often, and this bottom piece here expands out. And <laughs> you can hold the 150 to 500 with the camera mounted to the top in here, no problem. What was the problem was, by using it, it threw my hips out. So, I mean, it comes right down your whole side, and I was in pain after even a day trip on the Tom Taylor Trail. So, and this is what I mean by you have to use something in the environment you're going to be using it, because you don't know if your hips are going to be out until you've used it. Is that a camera bag, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> column A and column B there for you, Darren. <laughs> so the the home base bag is a really important bag to have. Um, when I'm home and all my gear's put away, it's in that uh, that 
Pro Runner 450, X450. Uh, but then there's the day bag. So say you're going on your trip, Darren. You're going to be gone a week. You want to bring all your gear that no matter what you do, you'll have the lenses and you'll have the accessories you need to make it happen. If you're trying to do star trails, you'll have your remote control. If you're trying to do uh, a really nice wide shot, you have your wide lens, your, your fish eye lens, uh, your whole sky lens that you use for real estate. Uh, you never know what you're going to want to use, but you're not going to want to carry it all the time. One day you're going down the coast, the next day you're going to a friend's house. Big difference, right? So Pocket, pocket camera to replace many of the other accoutrements. I'm not going to be taking 18 flashes because I'm not planning on getting that fancy. Uh, okay. One flash, no pocket wizards. Uh, what do I need? Uh, 50 mil lens, just because it's so nice to have around. It doesn't take much to carry that thing you can throw in your socks in your suitcase. Mm -hmm. uh, my 16 to 35, my 70 to 300, and I'm debating whether or not to bring my 24 to 70. I don't know that I'd be using it. I think I'm either going to want to go wide or I'm going to want to zoom in. Yeah, that's kind of how I would see it too. I think the 2470 would be a bit redundant with the 1635 and the 7200. And then if I want to get you know somewhere in between, throw the 50 on. Yep. Well, even just yesterday, as I say, I mean, I brought this. I had the 50 mil in here, and I had my all my wallet and everything else in here. But if I had to, I could put the camera in here as well, and I had my 2485. So pretty much that's all I had. When I was using the camera, it was on my hip. Walking around all day, it was on my hip. On the train there and back is when it was in the back. So then the day bag would be to hold the stuff other than your camera that you're using during the day. That stuff, your wallet, your passports, your credit cards, your batteries, your, I mean, you're bringing a flash, so you're going to have to have extra AA batteries with you, things like that, that you're going to want to have on you all the time. Oh, and I brought my flash with me in there yesterday, too. So, things like that. That's your day bag. It's where you, you bring the stuff that's really not large enough that you can just leave it at home. That stuff you just leave back in your, in your home base. But the stuff that you're going to be using for just that day for those experiences is your day bag. Go bag is the smaller version. Go bag is this. Um, go bag is my Merce, where I'm literally just bringing my camera, a lens, boom, done, that's it. Well, that other one you had, you were talking to, you put the 100 to, no, no, one oh. before that. This one? That one. Yes. That's what I would call a go bag. That could definitely be a go bag. You put your camera in there, and you just want to keep your camera protected while you're transporting just one camera and lens and maybe some batteries and memory card uh, from point A to point B. The only downside to this being a go bag is the length of it. It well, does. Yeah, that... It hangs down and it rubs into your legs and if yeah, you can get the they, smaller. They sell, they sell them in different lengths. Absolutely. <laughs> so I've got so I've got one that'll take my sixteen to thirty-five. Do you use the uh, Think Tank holster as well? Um. Yes. I mean, I've. Got too many bags right now. <laughs> well, this is the digital holster 50. So they do have a digital holster 20, 30, 40, 50. No, it's not. A th I think it says Henry's on it, so it can't be very good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, no. Who makes who makes the Henry's bag? Low Pro, right? Low Pro. So they're pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, they're good bags. Yeah. Um, lots of different bags. The home base, the day bag, the go this, bag. This, this guy here. So the camera. Oh, the top load zoom bag. Yeah. Yeah. You see, those are great. They're thirty bucks, thirty-five dollars. So it's got my D70 in it with the eighteen to seventy lens on, with the lens hood extended. So I, I think on my D, uh, seven hundred or D eight hundred, it might be a tight fit with the sixteen to thirty-five. That might just be a little bit too. But all this would be for would be you know bringing the 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 camera onto the airplane. But then I'm going to have the camera out and taking pictures. So when would I ever be carrying a camera around in this unless it's my second or spare camera? That would be when you and whomever are going to the coast and you're just going to be walking up and down, you're going to be walking in the cities, you're going to be just on your feet the whole time and you don't want to carry a bunch of extra stuff. The front pocket, you'll put your wallet, uh, the camera will fit inside. It's I would bag. never put my wallet in the camera bag. No? The camera bags are targets. Someone comes along, grabs the bag, they got my wallet? No, I don't think so. You know, that's a good point. And this is this is coming from a guy who doesn't travel to places where I really worry about that. 
to be honest. I got my, I got my Tilly hat for that. Your Tilly hat? You're giving away your secrets. The, the hat that has the pocket in it. You know, with my big, thick wallet. The, wall, the wallet's about this thick. You know, you'd never notice <laughs> something like that on a hat sticking out, bulge. <laughs> As... <laughs> Look at that guy. He's a real square head. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's his wallet. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, th you have to think creatively that way. I remember hearing a story of Ross when he was in uh, Spain and he had all of his, his gear stolen. I never think about that kind of stuff because I'm not going to Spain. I'm not going to Europe. I'm not going to these places. Although, yes, it can happen here in Canada. It can happen in a new market. It could. It could. I haven't thought about that yet, I guess. That's why we're doing a show. <laughs> I, I put my wallet in this thing. I carry it with me, and it's right on my side. And there's no way for anybody to take it off, at least with the way I carry my stuff so far. No, no, no. Your, your wallet, you should just leave it in your car unlocked outside overnight. Don't worry about it. What could possibly happen? I don't know. We should we should make a phone call. Uh, there's somebody that we know who that that has happened to, uh, but no, we'll, well talk about that another time. It, it wasn't him, and he did make several suggestions to not do that. <laughs> so. Where is he anyway? I could have sworn he would show up. Anyway, that's okay. We don't need Gabriel tonight. Maybe maybe his uh, wife had something to say to him. If well, see that's what surprised me. How are you going to be on vacation with your wife and kids at a cottage? and still come in and do one of these shows. It doesn't make sense to me. No, uh, you should be shmoring. Sh yes. Yeah, smoring. Shmore. Hey. Isn't it a shmore? Smore? Tomato, shmore. tomato. Hey, I'm not going to correct you. As long as they have the same stuff inside, they taste good. I'm good with that. Uh, we have some downstairs. I should go make them now. Ooh, yum. Anyway, Although, get you sidetracked. Yeah. What? What kind of camera bag would you take when you're camping? <laughs> when I'm camping? Camp bring it out to the campfire. For that, actually, I would bring this guy. This is my old, old camera bag. Actually, why not your, uh, why not your think tank? Because uh, I don't want that getting all kinds of fleas and stuff in it. <laughs> it's got to get character. It's got to look... This is characterized. Look. I've got all the character I need right here. But you know what? This is actually what I use for my accessories. Like... The big old Brinkman flashlights. Wink. I like to keep them protected. So anyway, there's a bag for everything. This is what I use for the accessory stuff. But if I was going someplace, like when I did the Toronto Zombie Walk or anything like that where I'm worried about blood getting splattered everywhere or, you know, dirt and critters and things like that, it just says... As long as it's not your blood. No. No, it's fake blood. It's, like, it's all fake blood. This is just a wide open section. So I can just drop whatever I want into it. There's no inserts. There's no partitions. Uh, it works perfectly for those kinds of things where you're grabbing things into the, out of the bag quickly. You don't care if it gets a little dirt on it. It's easy to clean. It's easy to empty out. That's, to me, where I would use something like that. At the beach or whatever. All kinds of different things, though. Bagless. I mean, we talked about them. Going totally bagless. If I was just going for a quick walk around the block and I wanted to bring my camera with me, then bam. Put that on my belt. Off I go. Camera clicks on there so well. I haven't shown anybody yet how this works. So, cotton carrier. You got this little piece in the back of your camera. Arrow facing the lens. You put it on sideways. And then as soon as you put it down, it's locked. So you can't take it off anymore. Same way your spider system works, I believe. Um, spider system is a ball, and you can put the camera in anyway. And then there's a latch on the holster that you can lock it in or not lock it. So if you want to be able to pull it out, you just leave it unlocked and you just pull it up. If you want it locked, you flick the little latch, and then you have to, it's spring-loaded, have to hold it and pull up the camera. Hmm. I don't know which I'd prefer. I've never used the spider that way. I know my buddy Phil, uh, he uses the spider system. But for me, it just... Grab the handle, give it a little twist, and it comes right up. But it's not going to come off if it's not sideways. So I guess it depends only, on how you work, use it and what you like. Only thing I could see is if I'm climbing down a rock face or something like that and the camera gets caught up on something and starts to come sideways, that thing's coming out. 
That's not a bad thing, though, because when you buy it, they actually give you a strap that goes around your neck. It's a very thin little piece of string kind of thing. And if it does come off, then it's, it's still attached to you. In fact, you can even strap it to a camera bag holster or um, shoulder strap or anything like that. So they do have a backup support strap thing that goes around your camera to keep it from flopping out, if that were to happen. But who knows? Which is probably not a bad idea. I should probably be throwing my uh, uh, b -b 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 rap black rapid strap on when I have it in the spider holster and I'm climbing down the side of a cliff. Or maybe I should just sh shouldn't be climbing down the side of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the safest bet. But I don't give you that choice sometimes on day trips. So. Well, I mean, we're not really supposed to be climbing over the fence that says do not cross out of bounds, no trespassing. Su supposed to? What? I don't, I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> um, I, I'm on this side of the fence. I can't see the sign. It's just a, just, just a white plaque on the fence. What does that say? I can't see that. Well, we had to jump the fence to get that great shot of the waterfall at uh, Ragged Falls. Brian was standing there. You know, when I was stepping in his hand, he was helping me over the fence. He must have been blocking the sign, honestly. I didn't see it. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so there's lots of different ways to go, and that's how I break them down. The home base, the day bag, the go bag, and bagless. Have you got any different ways to break it down? No, that's as good as any. <laughs> it works. The, the, the bag to cart all your crap around with you. That's and me. I'm the Sherpa. It, it depends on who you are as a photographer uh, and what, what it is that you're doing. Uh, Joseph Leduc, you, you know, Gabriel, we do different types of events, so we have a whole lot of stuff that we may need at one event or we may need at another event. When you go on holidays or you're going, you know, somewhere to have fun, you're not going to be lugging, you know, your background stands and all this other stuff with you. So mm -hmm. how much stuff do you, do you really need to bring with you when you go? And sometimes you get a bag that's too big because you want to carry everything, and then you're carrying it through the airport and going, my God, you know, this thing, and the longer you're carrying it, the heavier it gets. And you're going, my God, why did I bring all this stuff? At the end of the trip, I'll bet you there'll be half the stuff you never even used. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, that's the thing you also have to do. I mean, we look at Ross once again, and he's got so much gear that he tries out, and, you know, it's just something that he doesn't end up using, and he, he could bring it back, or he ends up just keeping so much of that stuff. That's the problem with gear. If you start getting addicted to the gear side of things, then you start losing sight of the shooting side of things. Sometimes it can happen. Uh, we just got a little post from Ron. Now, before, Ron, actually, he's in New York right now. And before he left, he picked up a, one of these cotton carrier systems from me. Uh, he says he's in New York walking the streets. Interesting topic. Uh, been carrying around his cameras using the Black Rapid system, and tomorrow he's going to try out the cotton carrier. His concern with the system is theft and how easy it is just to rotate the camera and remove it from his hip. Well, first of all, uh, put the second strap with it. That's one way to prevent that. Second of all, the only way I can see that actually happening is if somebody knows how the cotton carrier system works and they tilt it and take it off. If you're a professional thief, you may know that very well. Who knows? Um, but it is something that as I'm walking around with this camera, my hand is on the camera. For, if for no other reason, just to stop it from bumping into things as I'm walking by them, you know, like is there, my, is there a threaded base in the bottom of the cotton carrier clip? So what he could do is he could use his black. Yeah, there is. Isn't that? I can't really see. What's um, the thread? It's or is that, well, no, that's it's an Allen key. An Allen key. Okay. Yeah, it's an Allen key in the bottom. So you and, couldn't put a you couldn't put a um, tripod mount or other type thing on there when you got the cotton carrier. Well, if you look, see how it's got this very wide rubber base here? Yeah. It actually comes with an Arca Swiss tripod plate. Which is not good if you have a Manfrotto tripod. Or a Gitzo tripod. Or a Gitzo tripod. So that's why it's not on here right now. Uh, <laughs> but theoretically, you could put a tripod plate on there. And there's other ways to try and modify that to work as well. But I'm still learning. Once I get all my kit in, I'm going to be getting the vest. I'm going to be getting the carry-all system. I'm going to be getting the steady piece. And these are products that we're giving away as well. So if people want to try what we're talking about, submit your video to our photo challenge or our video challenge, and maybe you can get some of that for yourself. Oh, and Ron says cargo pants. 
Yeah, that's that's one of the best camera carriers you can get. I agree, and I wear uh, cargo shorts like yesterday when I was in Toronto, and that's where my wallet was. It was in my short pocket for most of the day. But uh, it's, the, it's the same deal when you're when you're going out. Really think hard about what it is you're going to need, and do you really need to, do you really need to carry all that stuff? Because you know, it all it's all going to weigh you down when you're walking around all day, mm -hmm. especially in the heat. Oh God. So hot. I can't I can't believe how hot it is right now. Yesterday like we had to go inside every half hour, forty minutes for some iced tea or for something. It was ridiculous. I don't like the heat. I just don't. I don't. I like winter. That's why I live in Canada. <laughs> it's true. I like it to be warm but not too warm. I'm fussy. And I like my coffee to be yeah, and I like my to be <laughs> roll up the rim to win. Yeah, I never win on that. Uh, Blake, Blake has a, a few comments as well. Sorry, what were you gonna say? No, Did I was gonna say I, I win quite often. Do you? I do. I guess I you win probably the please win the please play again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I won again. Yes, I won again. Uh, Blake says for Spider Holster, also a great company. Replaced the clip and belt for him over the course of the three years he's he's used them. Actually, he was just talking about that. Um, Spider has also just given him new product after his is broken, so those are pretty good. Uh, one perfect bag never will happen, but one perfect bag for a certain situation, maybe. That's very well. That's exactly, I think, what we're trying to say as well. Um, and then he forwarded on to Serena Star Leonard to watch this show because we're talking about her. And <laughs> Blake, if you... If if you can send us a note, was that dollars she was talking about, American dollars, Canadian dollars, or was that euros, 100 euros? Because for 100 euros, I believe you can probably get a, a good camera bag, but for $100, I don't think you're going to get much. That's going to be protective and good quality. You know, you don't want to have the strap break or be of you know, dubious quality that starts to slip. And, uh, the, the padding, you want it to, to maintain the, um, the foam density over the course of a couple of years because you know, it could start to deteriorate if it's not of uh, good quality. And then, you know, you plunk the camera bag down and shatter a lens or something like that. So you want to make sure you've got some good quality construction that will last you down the road. Mm -hmm. most, most people, when they buy one, don't really want to buy a, or replace the one that they have. Although buying yeah. another one that's a different color to go with accessorizing my, you know, shoes and my hat. That's important stuff. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> There's a new bag company, actually, I believe it's distributed by the same people that distribute the cotton carrier product. Uh, it's called Brent Haven. Have you seen those bags in the stores by any chance? I haven't seen them. No, I haven't seen them. It's a smart bag. Um, it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty well made, and it's not really expensive. But they use a really neat um, foam, not foam, but like a, a gel support in the bottom of the bag. Um, I haven't talked much about it, but I'm actually designing a camera bag myself because the world needs more camera bags. And uh, <laughs> But I've got a neat idea for a camera bag, and the bottom of it has to be very thin but extremely rugged and absorbent of the vibration. You can't put your camera down and have something smash your lens. We see it all the time. Uh, digital or your filters are broken because you put your camera bag down too hard and the bottom of the bag hit the, the filter the wrong way. It yeah. happens, right? So these Brent Haven bags actually have this really neat gel that is super thin and super super long, yeah, <laughs> super thin and super strong, and they look really nice too. I'm gonna do a quick screen share here, and hopefully when it's done, it won't kick me out of the room like it's been doing. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I could, I could be here by myself. Yeah, <laughs> you can wing it. <laughs> so here you go. They have their, uh, this is their shoulder case. That's a neat little design. Very clean. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I like it. So these Brent Haven bags, I have to give them a good look at when I get back to the store again. But bottom line is the materials they use, and you, you made me think of it when you are talking about something that's nice and strong. The base of it having that special gel that I'd never seen before really makes a big difference. So I think when I make my camera bag, I'm going to have Brent Haven build them and they can use that special gel because it's really cool. I think I'm just going to make a smart camera bag. You just gave me the idea. You said it was a smart camera bag. I'm thinking, is it really a smart camera bag? 
Hmm. You know, but the smart camera bag's going to have a built-in rechargeable Bluetooth device that when you turn it on, if you get outside range of your Bluetooth um, signal from your phone, will cause an alarm to sound on your phone and in the bag. Right? So if someone tries to steal your bag or if you forget and walk away from it, you know, an alarm will go on. Whoop, 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 whoop. I know you can get accessories and put them in, but imagine having that built into the bag. And then the keys for the lock. How many times have you lost a set of keys? Fingerprint reader. Scan. How about you just slide your iPhone into a special slot inside the bag, and that has the scanner right there, and you put your finger to your iPhone screen, and that just there integrates. Is a good, there's a good there idea. Go. And that way you can Actually, take your phone out, and your bag is no longer coded. So forget, forget the phone. The bag will be your phone. You just flip it open. You know, there's a TV screen, live two-way. You know, that's to get smart. That's to get smart. Can, can, can you? Forget the shoe. Just use your camera bag. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going way off subject. That's all right. Um, yeah, so that's how I would break it down. This is going to be a fairly short show tonight, which isn't such a bad thing. Um, but that is how we would break it down. There's lots of different bags to choose from. Go into a store. Try them out. Put them on your shoulder. Pay attention to the bag you, you have now and think, what am I missing? Detachable, what, what? Com detachable compartments. That's one of the nice things about the low pro bags that I have is the pockets on the side, they can detach. So if I want to travel light, I can just take off one of those pockets that I have all my stuff in and hook it on my belt pack. That is one thing I really like about this bag as well. Uh, I didn't mention it, but on the back, it actually has the waist belt. And on the side of that, you can actually strap their other different lens pouches and stuff to it. So with this one bag, I can end up putting lens pouch and lens pouch and lens pouch and lens pouch and all kinds of other stuff around the front of it and this whole thing folds down and yeah, lots of extra space you can put in there. I do really like this bag actually. Um, I gotta find a better strap though because I'm, I'm using a Think Tank strap on it. It didn't come with one. And it's oh. kind of hard and sorry Think Tank but it, you know it's falling apart pretty bad. They have said they'd replace this strap for me but I just haven't called them yet. Anyway, that's the strap that came with my holster bag. Well, so lots, else? Of, lots of pockets and compartments that you can hide things in, forget them there, switch bags. This thing was full yesterday. I mean, with the batteries that I was bringing with me and with my flash and with all the other little chachis I bring with me, you know, gets full quick. But it worked out okay. My camera was on my hip most of the time. Uh, repurposing old bags. I really find that, you know, maybe it's because I work at Henry's and some people come and just drop off their old camera bags and don't really need them and stuff. That's how I got this canvas bag back here with my flashlights in it. But finding an old bag like that, just because it wasn't right for them doesn't mean it's not right for somebody else, right? Isn't that what divorce lawyers do? <laughs> I hope I never know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm very happy with my wife. Uh, re repurposing yeah, I'd, bags. I, 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 I got to watch when I write these things, how somebody else might take that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Darren, what were you saying? I'd just be careful using you know, a bag that's not intended to be a camera bag. Uh, you can find that a lot of times there's, um, I don't know whether you call it dust, but stuff that's like dust-like. As the bag gets older, starts to deteriorate, you know, that kind of fluff and grid and things, uh, they can get into the, um, into the lens because the lenses, most of them aren't sealed. Mm -hmm. When they zoom in and they zoom out, you can get all that grit and different things in there. Uh, and some of the bags, I had one bag that did that. It was a camera bag, actually, and the, the foam inside just kept deteriorating and deteriorating, and there'd be stuff and... That's a good grit. point going around so you don't want to get that stuff into the camera so you want to make sure the camera bag is you know uh, the newer ones are all nylon so that you know if sand does get in there you can vacuum them out it doesn't hold it doesn't keep it have you seen one of these before I have those are more suitcase yeah than, than bag this, this is one of those um, those things that was left at the store and nobody really needed I just I'm a camera bag freak, so of course I saw a solid metal box like this. I thought, how the heck? Oh, that so, just that's not like the 
top shelf, the left side in my closet. I just that goes so nice. <laughs> I think yeah, exactly right. It suits my closet. So what I loved about it was the hidden compartment up here, which I can never open. There we go. Where you can fit all fit all kinds of extra little things. I got a strap in there for it. I got some old film still for it. Um, some filters and some books. Oh, that's more film. And my little quick guide. Of course, that's old school quick guide. Anyway, there's this little pocket up top here, and then you can strap that. And then you have all the other stuff inside. The problem is, this is all, like you're saying, Darren, this is all foam, right? Luckily, this yeah. stuff hasn't all broken down, so I don't have to worry about my camera getting all little foam bits in there. You know, it just it's all pretty protected. But remember these? They actually had the cases built onto the camera. Oh, yeah. Everybody still wants these, eh? The little leather covers for their old cameras. I remember last time we actually sold some at the store, they were uh, neoprene, and they sold for $80, and, and nobody bought them, and the what? well, occasionally they'd buy them, and then they'd end up returning them, because they really weren't that great. So, yeah, that old bag that literally connected right to the camera, a lot of people still want that. They're really not out there anymore, though. Those leather you know, those pieces. Those used to be the end thing with those 35-millimeter cameras. I know when I was a kid, you know, the, the camera came with... Uh, the camera case, I guess you could call it. Yeah. But the bottom, you have, you'd always have to take it off when you wanted to change film, which was a pain in the butt. That's for sure. And then they screw in the bottom, and you can't get the screw back in all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Blake says he's going to find out the currency when she's on next. So we'll have an update on that one day. And then as far as availability in Europe goes, Henry's hasn't opened any uh, stores out in Europe, have they yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Give them time. They are taking over the world. <laughs> can, you get, can you get those camera bags in other countries, do you know? Low Pro and Think Tank? Definitely, yeah. Low Pro is actually a Canadian company, which I was really impressed with. Um, Mr. Lowe, I believe Greg Lowe, invented the company years ago. Years ago, Ross gave me a whole history on that. It was kind of neat. But... Canadian company, and of course, they are currently made in, I have no idea because it's not going to stand here, but I doubt they're made in Canada. Great stuff, lifetime guarantee, low pro, think tank, uh, cotton carrier, spider, all of these bags we're talking about pretty much have a lifetime guarantee, and that's one thing that I really like about some suppliers these days is they're extremely uh, aggressive at making their customers happy. Bad press kills people, so... You know, nobody wants any bad press. They'll rather just give you a new bag and write right off their loss. And it, it's, uh, I guess, the name of the show, Choosing Your Camera Support System. Usually it's going to entail more than, more than just a camera bag. You know, a camera bag, a strap, a good, a good strap, and then, you know, um, a little, little bag. You know, the little bag, the big bag. It's true. And then they all grow together. They work together, you know. Um, if, you, if you are traveling, one of the things that I was told is that the carry-on bag can't be over a certain weight. So if you try to put everything in the camera bag, you may not meet the weight requirement. Mm -hmm. But if you have your belt strap on with you and you start putting all the accessories on the belt, they don't care how much you weigh. They just care how much the bag weighs. Well, that's good that you've mentioned that because if you think about it, when we start getting into systems like this, and you can fit a lot of stuff on that belt. Yeah. If I'm doing a, a long trip somewhere and I have to worry about carrying all this stuff over on an airplane and having minimum weight requirements, then this system works brilliantly. Now I'm carrying all my cameras on my chest, the heaviest lens is right on me. I don't even feel them because your chest and your, your shoulders are supporting all the weight. Um, this is I can't wait to get this system. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll bet you could sit with that in an airplane with that on. I wonder if they would let that. We'll have to get some people's feedback on uh, on that. I think when we do a show on travel again, we'll have an actual travel agent on the show as a guest, and they can walk us through that. Yeah, because that would sure, you know, because you, you want to have your camera out, or I'd want to have my camera out taking pictures out the window. Mm -hmm. Taking well, pictures inside the airplane. You're going to have one of these, Darren, so you you can let me know what you think about it. I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. 
Maybe you'll have it in time for your trip. I won't be going through U.S. Customs, so I should be okay. <laughs> we have a lot of viewers from the United States. Did you know that? No. It's our second most um, viewed country, the country that views us the second most. And believe it or not, you know who's number three? India. India. India likes us. Thank you, India. I like you, too. <laughs> well, we, must have, we must have had uh, Russell Peters watch our show once. <laughs> or something. <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll take a viewer from anywhere. Thank you very much for watching our show. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the bag segment goes. If anybody has any questions or, or points that they'd like to make, please feel free to post them on the Day Tripper Photo community. If we don't get to them tonight on our show, then you know what? There's follow-up afterward. Uh, our community is always active, talking about all these different things that happen on our show. And uh, if you have any questions, post them up there. Day Tripper Photo community on Google+. And there, of course, will be notes on that afterward. Now, we've been kind of overlooking the tip, app, and tool segment of our show for the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to bring it back tonight. There's a really great app that I found. Um, it was forwarded to me, and I forget who did it. It might have even been Blake. I don't recall. Um, it's an app for Nikon. It's basically every instruction manual that they've ever made for their DSLR, for their one-series cameras, their point-and-shoot cameras, and flashes. It's called... Uh, the Nikon Corporation Manual Viewer 2. I'm going to do a screen share here and show you what that looks like. Now, you can get it for iPhone, and you can also get it for Android. But unfortunately, for Android, um, no, not for Android, sorry. Uh, for BlackBerry, it's not available. It is, it is available for the uh, iPhone and for Android. Sorry, there it is. It's free, completely free. And this is one time, and because Gabriel's not here, we can rub it in, nanny, nanny, poo-poo, that Nikon totally rules because this is free. The Canon one, I tried to get Ross to download the Canon version. He downloaded it, and every single manual costs a buck. With Nikon, they're all free, and it works. And the manuals are great. They have indexes. You can access any part of the manual at any time. Um, I've got my D7100 manual up in my phone now. Super handy, and as we said on our read the full manual episode, having it on hand is extremely important. I've been wa walking around with my manuals in my camera bag for a while now, and uh, I'm taking them out. Don't need them. Got them on my phone. And once you download it, you don't have to be connected to the internet to view them, which is really cool. But you have to dump a whole bunch of songs on your iPhone in order to carry the manual with you. Uh, potentially. Potentially. The manuals are about 9 megabytes or 10 megabytes. They're not enormous, but they take up some space. And can you get it on a BlackBerry? Can you get it on a BlackBerry? Why do you even... Why are you on this show? <laughs> <laughs> to cause trouble. That, that's the only reason I'm on here. Is Actually, you know what, Darren? I don't know. Uh, there could be apps for the new BlackBerry Z and... Uh, was it a Q10? Oh, yeah, the Z10 and the Q10. There could be apps available for that. Honestly, I don't know. I haven't seen this app available for it, but hey, hopefully there will have apps for it. I mean, you don't want to exclude such a, a big market. Yeah, well, we'll see. I don't know. My next my next phone won't be a BlackBerry, so I won't yeah. be able to say that for too much longer, but it'll be a while. And honestly, I don't think my next phone's going to be an iPhone either. <laughs> I have a feeling that Gabriel has seduced me to go over to the dark side. Or maybe it's the light side. I think the iPhone is the dark side. You know, on that point, I was sitting on the train yesterday going to see my brother, and I was looking around, and every single person around me had an iPhone, not one Android, and I counted maybe 10 iPhones that people were playing on and all their little custom cases and stuff. So I don't know if Android's taken over as much as some people think. It's a, it's a tough market. I think Samsung's going to get in there and... Uh steal away some of the market share from people like Sony and who are the other manufacturers? Sony, Nokia. Yeah. Well, Samsung's definitely doing well. Uh, I spoke to Virgin. I, have, I use Virgin for my phone service. Uh, today, actually, they called to give me a, a checkup. See how I like their service. And how I like my pricing. I love the pricing. I got a great package. But um, I said, I have no problem with your package. I have no problem with your service. But why don't you have a big phone like the Samsung Note. That's what I'm looking for for the next one. 
bigger screen, right? I want to be able to show my pictures to people all the time. So, anyway, yeah. that's not... I, I saw somebody carrying around a phone like that, and the thing was like this. Yeah. It was like, pick, it was like picking up a computer. Hello? Have you seen the size of these hands? I know, but it's still... Look at that. Does, does that look like it works? But I guess today's creators don't believe in phone calls anymore. It's all about texting and email, so then... <laughs> Is that a dig as well? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I'm not good with the phone calls. Anyway, that's pretty much the show for tonight. Darren, have you got anything else you'd like to add? Uh, as far as camera bags go, no. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's so running into words. problems, email Brian. He'll help you out on your video if you're having a problem with it. That's right. Please remember to do the video, guys. Um, it's post, a lot of post fun. a link to the Day Tripper community. Uh, Gabriel or Brian or I can probably give you a pointer or two if you get stuck on something. That's right. That's the goal. And other than that, I hope everybody's having a great week, and I hope everybody's staying nice and cool with all this crazy heat out there. And if you have any questions, let us know. You can get a hold of me, Brian, at daytripperphoto.com. If you have any questions, get a hold of me there. Uh, come and see me at Henry's. I'm there full time. I'm there every day, but Tuesday or Wednesday, usually. So that's up in Newmarket, Henry's location. And if you'd like to get a hold of Darren to hire him for any virtual tours, Darren at dgvirtualtours.com. And you can hire me for private training or to shoot your house, make your house look good, make it look like a million dollars, even if it's only worth 500000 You know, <laughs> marketing, marketing, marketing. It always looks better in a good photo. Some pretty sad looking houses out there. But they look great in your photos. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching this week. And uh, we hope to see you all next week again. And that'll be all. Remember to click and, like and subscribe. And what? And Nikon's the best. <laughs> but what about Canon? Gotta love Canon. I wonder if Gabe's feeling this right now. You think so? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, but he watches it on YouTube, he will. <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a great week, Gabriel, and your wife, Trish, and your kids, and your kid, Jaden. And, uh... <laughs> oh, you got him. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.